Hello and welcome to our SIS Online MGA tutorial. My name is Jenny Hammond and I'm going to be walking you through how to quote and bind as well as use our eSign feature on our online MGA platform. I will also go over our website and some resources that are available to you as well as our wholesale markets. So we'll go ahead and get started with logging into the online MGA platform. And this is where you'll go to quote all of our exclusive contractor programs. So on here we have our general liability, excess, home inspection and property preservation, tools and equipment, builder's risk, contractor's license bond, and worker's comp. And up here we have all of our quotes that are in progress, sent off for approval, have been approved, sent off to bind, our incomplete binds, and all of our new binds. Up at the top right hand corner, we have all of our shortcuts. Right now we're in the home screen. We also have a renewal center, a favorites, a quote archived, e-signatures, agency information, and a live chat feature. This is where you can chat with any of our binding team members and underwriting team members during our normal business hours. Down here on the left side, we have our contact information, as well as all of our social media links and a link to our homepage, which is sisinsure.com. So today I'm going to be showing you how to quote a general liability. So we're going to click the comparative rater, and this is going to take us to quote all of the general liability programs we have available from our risk retention group to our A rated carriers. We're going to enter in the company's information, the zip code, the estimated total gross receipts for the next 12 months, estimated sub costs, number of field employees. So I'm going to have just one employee for this quote. And then we're going to select our range of payroll and I'm going to select 15 to 30,000 years in business. Is this a premise only policy? Yes or no. And then we'll select our class code and I'm going to select drywall. Now you'll see some premiums start to populate down here at the bottom. We've got in orange our risk retention, occurrence or claims made. And then in the blue, we have our A-rated programs with an occurrence form or claims made. Over here, we have our application in progress. We're at 29% currently. And over here, we can go ahead and save and close this to come back to it later if we choose. So currently we're in the small program for both the risk retention and the A-rated because we're quoting a drywaller. But if we were to change this to say a roofer, this system will automatically push us into the large program for both the risk retention and A-rated. And that's for your larger contractors or hard to place risks, but the system will make that determination for you. So that will be automatic. Now, if we had multiple classes, then we would just change our percentage from 100 and that will give us a drop down until we get to that total of 100%. So you can add as many classes as you need to here. So if I went ahead and selected a third, then I will have a total of 100%. But once I take away some of these percentages over here, I can then go back to just having one class code. So for this quote, I'm just gonna continue on as if I was quoting a drywaller. And now we're gonna be pushed back into the small program automatically. I can select my limits, my SIR, number of losses, estimated material cost, and here we're going to enter our desired effective date. And these are all the other lines of business that we have available and we've provided some estimated premiums for you as well. Now we'll get into our endorsement section. So here we have a per project A rated endorsement. This is just for the risk retention policy since it is non-rated. If the insured had a requirement that they needed to have an A-rated carrier, then you could purchase this endorsement for them for that specific project. We also have a blanket AI, primary wording and waiver subrogation package available. And all of these down here are going to be your buybacks. So if for instance, you had a plumber that was sweating pipes, then you may want to add this heating devices endorsement onto the policy. Another example would be uh, this overspray endorsement if you had somebody that was doing some painting with a sprayer. Now our next section is going to be our payment options. We can enter in our broker fee here 
and you'll see I do not have any option except for full pay. That is because I have not selected which program I want to present to my insured. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this small a, manuscripted occurrence form, and now I will have some payment options available. I can also choose to use my own third-party finance. Uh, but for this, I'm gonna go ahead and choose Imperial PFS. Once that's selected, we will have some financing information here. Our down payment, number of payments, monthly payment, and total of all payments. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter in the company information. So you'll enter in the contractor's license number, what's their classification, their DBA, first name and last name, years of experience, entity, applicant's phone number and email. So you'll see that some of these fields are bolded and some are not. So anything that's bolded is gonna be a required field. And then we'll enter in the applicant's email address. This is important because this is where we're going to be sending the application to them in just a moment. Now this next section is really important. Use carrier approved descriptions. If the insured meets the first tier of underwriting, this application could be automatically approved. There is some criteria that will need to be met and this is one of them. If you check this no, then it's going to let you know that it will result in additional underwriting review. So as long as it does meet the uh, description that we have here in this text box, you'll wanna keep that checked yes. Here we're gonna enter in their largest project uh, and give a description about that within the last five years, as well as their gross receipts for that project and their gross receipts uh, for the 12 months prior to this application, as well as how many projects they performed. Then we can enter in the applicant's physical location. And if that is the same as the mailing address, then you'll just keep that checkbox marked. If it's different, then uncheck that box and enter in the insured's mailing address. Here we've got their type of work performed, so we will break up the percentages between new construction versus remodel repair work, and then we will break up the residential versus the commercial work. Maximum number of interior stories and exterior stories, uh, the depth below grade, and uh, all of these yes or no questions will need to be reviewed and answered appropriately as well as answer all of the questions as they pertain to the subcontractors that they use. Down here we have the option to add on another line of business and bundle with the general liability quote. So I'm going to show you guys how to add on some tools and equipment by selecting yes here. I'm going to keep the effective date the same as my general liability and I'll choose my deductible and here we have four different bundles to choose from. So bundle number one is going to be $10,000 of miscellaneous tools. Bundle number two adds on an additional $5,000 of office contents. You can customize this quote and schedule your equipment. And then we also have a rented and leased uh, option and that has short-term policies available as well. But I'm just gonna add on this $10,000 of miscellaneous tools. And you can see down here, we've got that premium already added onto our quote. We can add an additional interest here below. And if there is no additional interest, then just mark that appropriately and continue to answer all of the rest of the underwriting questions that are provided here. So now our application is complete and it's ready to be sent off for approval. Now, if it meets the first tier of underwriting approval, it will be automatically approved. And you'll see that in the status here. But in this case, it has been sent off for review with an underwriter, so we'll just wait to hear back from them. And once it's approved, we will receive an email notification and we'll go back into the system, go into our approved quotes, and then we can continue on with the binding process. So you have a couple different options here. You can either print the application and send it to your insured 
uh, for them to review and sign, or you can use our free e-sign feature, which makes things much faster uh, and gives you some expedited binding times. Now, if your agency accepts credit cards as payments, we've provided this payment authorization form for you for them to enter in their credit card information. If you do not accept credit cards, then you will not want to include that authorization form with the application packet. We'll select confirm and review, and we must scroll down all the way to the bottom of the application before we can accept the terms. So just review this information for accuracy. This is all the information we just entered into the online rater. It's gonna have all of the applicants' forms that are gonna to need to be signed, including the surplus lines documents. And also it will include the finance agreement. So everything that the insured and yourself will need to sign is gonna be included and they will be split up accordingly. So your insured's only gonna receive the applicant copies and then you'll be able to review all the copies, including the items that are required for your signature. So down here, we've got our finance agreement. some instructions for the insured to enroll in automatic payments. And then here is that payment authorization form I was mentioning uh, for the insured to provide their credit card information so you can charge them for the down payment, which is entered into this form for you automatically. And then go ahead and click accept. And this email address that's entered here can be changed if you wanted to use a different email address than what you entered into the application. Otherwise, just go ahead and click Submit. And now this is off for electronic signature. And you can see that here under status that it's been initiated. Here's the email that your insured is going to receive. It's going to let them know that they need to sign some documents in order to complete their application. They'll click Review and Sign. And now they'll go ahead and start that DocuSign process. Now your insured is going to agree to use electronic signature. They'll click continue. And they're here going to want to adopt their initials and signature style. They'll want to make sure that their full name is correct on here before they click continue. And now they'll go through the DocuSign process, signing all of the flagged areas. And anything that has a red box is going to require some text be entered such as their title and their printed name. They will also have a copy of that finance agreement with all of that information pertaining to their installments and their down payment. And then here's that payment authorization form to provide a credit card if that is the payment form that you accept. Now they've clicked finish and they have completed their e-sign and you will be receiving a notification email that it's your turn to now countersign and there is a link to get you back into the application to do so. You will click sign and now you'll go through the same process. Agree to use the electronic signature and you'll adopt your signature and initials and then you'll go through and sign everything that is flagged and enter in any text information that's required that appears in a red box. Then once you're done signing, you're going to click finish. And now the application and all the required documents are going to be uploaded automatically into the app ID. So there's no need for you to manually upload anything. You can actually just check off everything in the required documents checklist and send this off to bind. Once the policy has been bound, you're going to receive an email notification allowing you to go back into this app ID and print the policy and share it with your insured. So now that we've gone through a quote and bind on the online MGA platform, I would like to take you to our website. I'm going to get to it from the Raider, which is on this shortcut down here. You can also get to it directly by going to sisinsure.com. So our website's gonna be a really great resource for you. Come on here and learn more about all the products that we have available. 
We just went through the exclusive programs that are available on the online MGA platform, and that would be the General Liability, Workers' Comp, Excess, Builder's Risk, and the Marine Contractor's License Bonds. But we also have a very large wholesale division, and I want to go into that a little bit with you. So if you click on this commercial auto link here, you'll see the different programs that we have available for commercial auto. So we have two options for you here. We've got Mercury Business Auto, and then we have Prime for those hard to place risks. And if we click on this Mercury Program tab here, we can go in and learn more about the program, the states it's available in, and we can also send our submission right through this page by filling out this information here. Or if it's a fleet for over seven vehicles, you'll want to email that submission over to us and that email address is wholesale at sisinsure.com. So now I'm gonna take you into the business package page and show you all these other lines of business that we have available. We have a BOP, Cyber Liability, e &O, EPLI, Special Events and Kiosks, Liquor Liability, Pollution Liability, Vacant Property and Land, a Property and GL Package, Professional Liability, and then this is a link to Hiscox Now. It's an online rater we give you access to. It's an admitted carrier and direct bill. You can quote 180 different professions. They've got a BOP available as well as standalone general liability and professional liability. We offer 15% commission. Scroll down here and view the appetite guide. And then in order to get to the online writer, you're just gonna select this quote now button. It'll take you directly to Hiscox. If you have credentials already through another wholesaler, you can sign in here with those or you can create a new Hiscox account. And you also have the option to skip the sign-in and go ahead and start your quote and then create a sign-in later. So we'll go back into our website and click on this resources tab. Up here, we have some information about branding our application. Shoot your logo over to us and we will put it on the application that goes out to your insured. We do not charge for this feature. So definitely take advantage of that because branding your agency is very important. Here are some logo dimensions and design recommendations for you as well. We accept JPEGs, PNGs, and vector format logos. We cannot accept any PDFs. And if you do not have a logo, we can actually create one for you. So just shoot us an email and we'll get working on that for you. Uh, here's the information about eSign and you can download this document here and it'll go through with you in more detail how to use that feature. And also under the resources tab, we have some pages where you can download our applications and marketing materials. And then we have an SIS on demand page where you can view all of our webinars and tutorial videos, as well as sign up for some live webinars. Uh, we have information here about Zoom and they are a company that handles our inspections and audits. And you can also request loss friends here. Be sure to come and check out our blog. We've got a lot of exciting information here for you to read up on, as well as get subscribed for our email newsletter. By clicking this link here, just provide your name and your email address and the state that you're located in, and you will receive our emails that let you know about our programs and any new products that we may have available. And then finally, here's our contact page. So if you need to reach a specific department, we've got their contact information here, as well as our phone number and our mailing address. So that concludes today's training webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time and being here with me today. I hope that you found this information to be useful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us. Our email address is marketing at sisinsure.com. We really look forward to working with you and your agency. Please take care and have a great day.